There are clearly good, good movies and clearly bad, bad movies, but sometimes we like to talk to really, really creepy men in vans in order to find out what is everything in the middle. This is Good, Bad, Bad, Good. How did you know about the balloon? What aren't you telling us, Gwen? Either there's a leak in the department or- Or what? I'm the grabber? No. You think I kidnapped Vance Hopper last spring? Is that it? Vance got held back twice. I've seen him fight, and trust me, he could kick the shit out of either of you blindfolded. When watch your language. I know you're yeah. scared and you want to go home. I'll take you home soon. Sister, I gotta be upstairs for a while. Something's come up. What? Never mind what. Do we like to talk to the men? Or? Some people might. <laughs> I think so. Homeboy went to help him with the with his eggs. I'd be like, what the... We'll get into that. Hey, everyone, and thank you for joining on today's special episode of Good, Bad, Bad, Good. It is special because today we are kicking off our October Horror Fest of Good, Bad, and Bad, Good movies. I am one of your hosts. Travis Orozco, and I am a director and producer. With me, as always, is... Kylene Amai, and I'm an actor and a writer. And also... Your other host, your third host, (laughs) Brian Ossip, video editor. (laughs) And today, if you could not tell from those great movie clips, we will be discussing 2022's The Black Phone. It was lobbied for. It was Uh, begged for. For what it's worth... But why does IMDb say 2021? Probably because that's when it was entered into IMDb and yeah. they haven't changed it. But it it's, it's still it's Or it was the probably scheduled right to release at that time and then they pushed it back because of the pandemic. And oh, yeah. This came out uh, the day before my wedding. That's why I didn't watch it then. I watched it in Austin when I was there for your wedding. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't you have been... Uh, weren't we out like dancing and partying the night before the wedding? Travis was in a movie theater. I watched his it... special place. I think I watched it Sunday night. Sunday night. After you, yeah. Oh, were you in town till you Monday? We didn't leave over. We didn't leave until Tuesday. Oh shit! I probably knew that, but just yeah. forgot. You were doing it somewhere with your anyway, lady. As I was, was saying, your wedding. I this was too movie. Drunk. Sorry. <laughs> 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 oh no! I I was walking back by myself from the after 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 party of Brian's wedding. It was five thirty in the morning, and I'm walking back by myself to like my hotel room. And I'm almost there. And I'm like, all right, there's my hotel. I'm going to make it. I'm good. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, shoot. And then turn around and (laughs) like all on the sidewalk. Oh, God, we're getting real (laughs) personal today. It was like mid walk. So I just like, I didn't even stop. I was just like, I I, kept walking. (laughs) But I I felt 100% like I did not feel drunk at all. (laughs) That shit will sneak up on you. It was weird. It was weird. Did you do a bunch of lines of blow as well? (laughs) What? So did you do a bunch of lines of blow as well? No. Because you may not feel drunk then. Just mounds of cocaine. <laughs> Just, Just mounds. M- mounds of I cocaine. I wouldn't know. I wasn't invited. Well. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't know Brian pre-podcast, and I still haven't met him in person. That's true. This is very true. Yes. By the time this airs, we will have met in person. Yep. Hey, yo. Hey. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Can we not? Let the audience know that we're recording this earlier. Dang. Well, what do you think? We're recording this live? Not live, but maybe that we go. I don't know. You're hey, giving all the podcast secrets away. Well, fine, then, you know, whatever. Damn. Anyways, as I was saying about this movie, it was lobbied for, pushed for, begged for by our very own Kalinama. <laughs> because. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. I- I was confused. She went and saw it. And then afterwards, we were talking about what movies to do for our horror fest. And Kai was very much like, we need to see it. I have so much to say. So be lucky or feel lucky that you to be lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Feel lucky that you you tuned in today to hear all all of the hot 
takes that Kai is going to have for you. You know what's funny is I kind of liked this movie more the second time I watched <laughs> it, and I do not remember lobbying so hard for it. You, I literally changed the bum. schedule. We were originally going to do The Strangers. That's true, we were. Right, which I was down with. Look, y'all, since, Either I since was we're letting you in on a little bit of a podcast in the moment here, that I was like, we have to do this, and you took me seriously, or you're being too dramatic now. I don't know. I am an actor. Travis is a previous in another life actor, all the Listeners drama. out there, I'm going to confide in you. <laughs> Since we are already telling you about our podcast secrets, I'm going to let you in on a little bit more, or like some more secrets here. How this usually works is I say, hey, Kai, hey, Brian, I love you both. <laughs> what do you think lie. of this? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think of this idea? Do you like it? And then Kai will be like, I don't know. And then Brian's like... No. <laughs> no, 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 no. My response is usually, yeah, I'm down for whatever. He also made you sound like a cartoon dog just then. <laughs> like, oh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and usually Brian follows that no up with, it doesn't matter. I don't care anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I have to deal with. <laughs> Everyone listening out there in podcast land. That's what I have to deal with on a... Almost daily basis. Travis is peachy and perfect and does no wrong, and Brian and I are idiot assholes. I did not say that. I like to think we're just cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I did like not that say that. Too. Travis is just a <laughs> nerd. Anyway, before we get into the verdicts, let's hear the synopsis brought to you by Google. Hey, Google, what's the plot synopsis for the black phone? Here's the synopsis of the black phone. Finney Shaw is a shy but clever 13-year-old boy who's being held in a soundproof basement by a sadistic, masked killer. When a disconnected phone on the wall starts to ring, he soon discovers that he can hear the voices of the murderer's previous victims, and they are dead set on making sure that what happened to them doesn't happen to Finney. Thank you, Google. So now for the verdicts. I will start with you, Kai, since this is such a beloved piece of cinema to you. <laughs> yeah, I said that this movie... It's a good, bad movie. Interesting. Brian, since you want this to be nominated for Best Picture, what did you think? Excuse me, that is not what I said, but I will agree with Kai. This is a good, bad movie. I'm pretty sure in the text thread you said that this was better than Clueless. Oh, oh boy. If you weren't so far away, I'd, I'd fight you right now if you weren't so far away. <laughs> 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 okay, and um, I think this is a bad, good movie. Interesting. Until so first, we will be talking about the plot synopsis slash story slash script slash everything that happens between the first frame and the last frame. Kai, with all of your studious notes. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a please... lot of words written down on that page. It is a lot of words can written down. Listeners out there. If you've ever seen 8 Mile, Kai's notes look like <laughs> Eminem's notes when he's scribbling in the bus. Like he, she just has so many notes. She's ready to drop. Okay, ready? I wish I could speed talk and just be like, hey, you guys, until my head turned around and exploded. You don't need to. People can just listen to this in double the speed. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. That's true. Okay, so for the next 30 seconds... Listen to Kai's <laughs> hot take in That means that this will only take me a minute, but it's going to be a lot longer than that. No. Yeah, okay. Let me start this out. I loved the first 30 minutes of this film. Just loved it. And then the rest got a little, yeah, fart noise for me. <laughs> 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 Uh oh, she's gonna start saying that it's hot in here. Oh jeez, we've lost Kai already. And she just started that's that's usually Kai's uh, "it's hot in here" laugh. This laugh proceeds. It's so hot in here. <laughs> You're so right. Because you made a fart noise, and then I was so thinking about like here. sweating and watching this movie in like shart. I don't know. In shart? Wait, wait. Did you, wait, did you just say that? Did you just say that you sharted while watching this movie? <laughs> What? Do you not have toilets in your apartment? <laughs> no, 
Brian, it's a studio apartment. Of course she doesn't. She comes to our <laughs> place to use the restroom. Travis's bathroom. I'm an actor in Hollywood. Of course I don't have my own restroom. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. No, I just you made a noise that reminded me of a shark and, <laughs> and it's hot in here. I feel like sharks don't usually make noises. Of course I feel they like do. if it's a true sh- okay. if it's a true shark, it's just like <laughs> wet and but it still makes a noise. Everything makes a noise. You feel, you feel it in your underpants and you're like I got to go. Your <laughs> underpants. What are you, my grandmother? All right, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you feel it in your long like underwear. We're sorry. We're talking about sharks right now. How did we get here? We uh, got here by watching the movie that you lobbied for. And you don't even want to discuss this, this the This is plot. your own fault, Kai. This is your own fault. I could be going in on the strangers right now, but no. I'm crying. I didn't tell you to take out the strangers. Okay, I would have okay. actually enjoyed you, watching that movie. We just tell the audience yes, what you thought about okay. the plot. Uh, all right, so I love the first 30 minutes of this movie. And then I just found myself Sharding. sort of bored, Sort of not sharding with sh- and then I sat in my own shart and wondered why I was listening <laughs> to the next hour of the movie. Watching the next hour of the movie. No, I just I I love the concept, right? Of of this this felt like an ode to all the lost kids on the milk cartons in the seventies. Or can I ask a clarifying question? Sorry, yes. concept. What concept in particular? Like a serial <laughs> killer? No, 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 concept. really. Because there's a Did lot. There's a one. lot. Like it seems like a very straightforward story, but when you actually break it down, there's a lot that goes on. Like is the is like the concept of a serial killer that kidnaps kids? The concept of well, the dead if you talking had to the living? You to let me explain. Well, I yeah, just want to make sure yeah. that. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I, I, get I just didn't want you to for say me, like it's I, the for me it's the um this felt like an ode to 1970s uh milk carton kids, right? Actually, I don't, I don't know if that I came think out, it started, started in the, in the 80s, 70s. But whatever. Okay. Well, maybe it started in the 80s because of all the kids that went missing in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> but this definitely felt like this was sort of the revenge story for all kids who have been gotten taken up by a chimo, you know, in a van. What is a chimo? Child molester. Mm. Oh. You've never heard that Did term? you know that slang, Brian? I never heard that. That's that some, that's that Seattle slang That's right that there. Seattle slang. That's that Tugtown slang. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm super hip, so if I didn't know it, then... Chimo, yeah. Interesting. Anywho, I, yeah, so I, so I appreciated that concept, right? Because mm-hmm. um, I like when horror movies per, in particular have a message and for me this was going in the direction of like we're giving a voice to the kids that that got kidnapped that didn't come back that didn't escape that didn't have the trajectory that our hero character does in this and i always love a good revenge story a classic revenge story i'm obsessed with all quentin tarantino movies because of that fact why are you making confused face? Other than kill, oh, kill They're Bill, Django and Chained. Stories. They're literally that's what he does. His revenge movies, every single one. Once upon a time in Hollywood is not a revenge. A hundred percent, it is. No, it's not. Who are they? So the characters aren't aren't seeking revenge. The film, like in and of itself, is kind of. It's like, a revenge film. Is it though? Yes, he literally takes a he in all of his films, not all of his films, but he takes moments in histories where in history where something incredibly shitty happens, and then he kills the bad guys and rewrites history. Okay, he did that for Django, Inglorious Bastards, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. But all of them are revenge films of some Jackie movie. Brown, Reservoir Dogs. Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight. Reservoir Dogs. You said a revenge Reservoir film. Dogs twice. I know. I haven't seen Pulp Reservoir Fiction. Dogs in a really long time. So I'm trying I to guess, think on yeah. that. I guess, yeah. I'll, he, I'll give they, you that, That's yeah. his theme. So I, I love a good revenge film. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved where I thought this was going, what I thought this was trying to say, but it didn't say it in a in a most entertaining way for mm-hmm. me. I didn't stay very hooked past the first half an hour, and that was particularly the first time I saw it. I watched it a second time just today. Um, and I actually, I liked it more the second time, but I was, I think I liked it more because I was really picking it apart for all the aspects of filmmaking, right? The technical, the this, the that. And I, I really appreciated a lot of parts of it. And I also, I'm, I'm getting into other things now, but I, 
you know, I thought the cast was solid. Oh, you're making faces. No, 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 no. Go, 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 go. Continue, please. Yeah, I and I liked a lot of the language of the film. Like, the actual, like, I love... Gwen, the sassy younger sister, and I how Gwen. she speaks. Oh my gosh. She calls the detectives fart knockers. They were like, she's all my, these. Amazing. She was my favorite part of the film. Oh, she was incredible. Yeah, she's great. She's great. Hands down. Yeah, and the writing with her character is great. And I think most of the, the actual dialogue feels real and true. Um, so I appreciated that. I'll just give those basics for now, and we'll get into more detail, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you keep making faces like you've I'm got allowed stuff to, make faces, to say. Okay? You've got stuff to say. Say it. Brian? <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't say it. Yeah, I mean, I the idea of the movie sounded pretty good. It got a little bit weird in that it felt like it couldn't tell whether it was trying to be like a typical horror thriller or like a supernatural thriller. You know, like, so personally, I interpreted... I forget what the, the main kid's name is, the young boy who gets kidnapped, but... Bobby. No, no Finn. 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 Finny. Yeah, I interpreted him talking to the voices on the phone more as his internal coping mechanism and his way of, like, dealing with the oh, situation that he was in. And also, like, you know, as the Google synopsis said, like, he's a smart kid. Like, he's very clearly a smart kid. He talks about tutoring one of the other kids. I'll get into that scene in a minute. That kid cracked me up. The kid with the bandana. The little Daniel LaRusso kicking butt. Robin. Robin. The Mexican Miguel kid. Miguel Caz Cazarez Mora. Yeah. But so Finn is, the, you know, is obviously a smart kid. And that just kind of struck me as his way of coping and dealing with and trying to figure out, like, the best way for him to get out of that situation. But then you had the sister, and I, I, you just said her name, and I completely forget what her sister is. What is Gwen? Gwen. Um, and I loved her character and everything that you guys said I agreed with, but the whole she's visualizing dreams that happened in real life is kind of weird and felt very out of place for the rest of it. But like, kind of like you said, Kai, like the the whole, I mean, I wasn't alive in the late 70s, but it just felt like very true to life with like the way things were kind of more like laid back and happy-go-lucky and kids were just running around, you know, without much worry. Like nowadays, kids probably don't do that because the world's a fucked up place. So it just felt like very nostalgic. And like you said, like the writing for Gwen was fantastic. I mean, she was just, I mean, she stole the show, I thought in many ways. And part of that was just her performance. She was a great little actress, but also the writing for her, I think, was probably better than anybody else in the movie. So yeah, like I I liked the idea of it. There were a couple things here and there that felt a little out of place or convoluted. And I don't know, maybe like my interpretation of the phone calls is not how they intended it. Maybe it is just supernatural, like the dreams. But I don't know. I think I would like it better if it's more like his internal <laughs> way of coping. I, I think I would actually like it better that way, your way, the way that you envisioned it. But I didn't mm. get that from the film. Like, until you just said that, I didn't think that. I thought I thought it was one of those situations where there are too many elements here for me to continue to believe the story. That the ghosts are talking. Not only are the ghosts talking through the phone, he's also seeing the ghosts. There's a possible question of like, does Ethan Hawke's character, the, the grabber. what do they call him? The grabber. Does he actually hear the, the ghosts because they allude to him picking up the phone once or twice? And then the Gwen's character, the little girl's character, the main character's sister, her visions, and the whole thing around that with like, her mom had visions and killed herself and... But these visions come in dreams, and and the fact that the police just believe yeah, her visions weird. right away, and the fact that, like, the drunken father just, like, whips her for having her visions, yet this child is, like, running around on the streets after her, her brother already got kidnapped, just, like, out on a bike in the dark, and she's not getting her ass whipped for that. I'm like, wait a yeah. second. What's happening here? Well, he's also a huge drunk, so he probably was just passed out when she's riding at night. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you, Kai, that the concept is good. And by concept for me, the idea of a serial killer out there grabbing kids and killing them, I think it's compelling. And also to even go the step further of like, there's this phone that's clearly not connected to anything, but he's still hearing voices like through the phone. It's the execution from there on out that's just like, oh my gosh, 
You have two. So mm -hmm. I think both of you know what a deus ex machina is, right? You have two deus ex machinas throughout this entire film, which just takes away any and all. Do you want to explain what that is for the sure. viewer? A deus ex machina listener? in, I guess, any kind. I mean, it's a literature thing and it's also a film thing. But um, it essentially stands for act of God. Um, it's something that just coincidentally happens or like essentially it's just this thing that drops and helps the characters in some way. You have, not only is he getting the help of these ghosts that he sees and, like, listens, but also, yeah, the the sister, like, perfectly timed dreams that, like, help just in the nick of time that just makes, in my opinion, makes you feel less connected yeah. to, like, what's actually happening. Agreed. There's no suspense in knowing that there's these two safeguards that are going to help him. Mm-hmm. And that, for me, just deflates the entirety of the film. Yep. Not to mention there were... It takes away the fear, too, and yeah. we're watching a horror film. Yeah. Yeah. And this is more of a technical thing, but you had talked about too many things happening. Seeing them also didn't, like, help in any way. Oh, we should get into that in the technical yeah. section. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, definitely. But, yeah. but I also just think for the audience out there the i i don't know if we set this up well enough there's this guy there's the grabber that's like taking all these kids and all these kids know about the grabber mm -hmm. but then every kid we see get kidnapped from there on out from like the start of the film on they're like just the stupidest kids well even our hero character who knows about the grabber whose friend possibly had just been abducted uh, like by a the week grabber, ago or something literally yeah. walks up to the van he also knows about the black balloons because of his sister, which I'll go into that. Yeah, in a he oh my gosh. And he balloons. walks think up about that. looking into the van and he goes, are those black balloons? And gets as close to the van as he, he the possibly door, can. No, the the I, I rewound it and watched that part like okay. three times over because I was also, I also, it was cut so quickly. I couldn't tell what he stabbed the grabber with. Yeah, I couldn't tell until later. Until oh. later, yeah. So it clicked for me there that, like, this kid knows that there's a grabber. He knows about the black balloons. Baby's black balloon makes her cry. Goo Goo Dolls, nobody. What? Black balloon. No, Goo Goo Dolls. sorry. I mean, I know the Goo Goo Dolls, but I Brian, don't remember that. Brian, it's like you that. set us up for these old man jokes. And, like, <laughs> we just can't. You guys were both alive when that song came out. Sure we were. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, I, Brian. I listened to the Goo Goo Dolls, but I don't remember Talking about the talking 70s. About. <laughs> talking about, oh, okay. Talking about the music we don't know. Uh, yeah, so so that moment was just like, there were enough moments in this script that made our characters took away their power and their strength or in that case made him seem a little stupid that like deflated as you said that was a good word the script for me or the concept that I that I first sort of loved also just a funny side note the when he first meets the grabber he comes out of this van he tries to show him this magic trick and I saw this movie in the movie theaters on a second date third date with <laughs> a magician who had not gone to a movie in like a, like since before the pandemic and was like, I never go to the movies. This is fun. And he didn't know anything about the movie I was taking him to see. And then the first 30 minutes, there's a Chimo. I'll use that term again. There's a Chimo magician. <laughs> and I like, I squeezed his hand and just like giggled. I was like, sorry for taking you to this. He's like, yeah, what do you think of me? <laughs> yeah, this movie really, really set back magicians. Yeah, like this. totally, totally. <laughs> I feel like that moment where, sorry, the, the moment where Finn goes are those the are those black balloons was like the biggest face palm moment that i've had watching a movie or a tv in a long time and i get like he's what like 14 he's maybe 15 or something so like kids are mm, no dumb. he's middle school i think right so is he's like he? 12 or oh, so he's 13. like 12 or 13 so either way he's young and he's dumb i think that age is more than appropriate to know like middle school like you especially if this is again going back to like his best friend was just kidnapped right like, and his sister is the one that talked about the black, yeah. black balloons which is why he asked about them in the first place but can we just talk about the black balloons real quick well, well why? can we talk about why not just are the there black, balloons? black balloons at all that's his calling card what, not just the what black balloons. did that have to do yes but how and like he lets go of the black balloon so how in any aspect how do you find a black balloon if he lets go of them? And in every scene we see him abduct kids, he lets go of the big bunch of black balloons. So it's not like he 
Hmm. leaves them at the scene of the crime. And also, why is that his calling card? Why is he doing this at all? Why, 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 why? Why are the wet bandits from home alone? Why is it just turning on water? They want money. No, but why is their calling card just letting the water run? That's stupid, too. Oh, 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 oh. Sure, sure. These people are clearly not, make a good not point. sane. But the, the part I will agree with is that he is just letting go of the balloons and they're just flying away. Flying away. Also, though, for me, I just, with this, with the whole script, this was an hour and a half long movie. And I actually, because I really was intrigued by the concept, I think I actually wanted it to be a little bit longer to give us just a little bit more insight into Ethan Hawke's character, into the grabber, why he's doing what he's doing, what the naughty boy game was all about. I generally would agree, but in this case, I kind of liked the fact that I didn't know much about him, that he was just this weird, creepy, fucked up character. Like, I felt that made him seem a little bit more unstable and off the rails, maybe not knowing anything about him. I agree with Brian. Sometimes the, the lack of knowledge leads to your imagination filling in those gaps. And for a character like that, I could... Well, you can more easily fill in the, the not gaps. Not just that, but like, I, like I, I think there is a scary nature in not knowing. Like, sometimes people just do and are crazy, do crazy things. And some people are just, like, evil, you know? And Some people just like to watch the world burn. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Good call out. Thank you. But going back to, like, I'd even think about the fact that he, like, lets the balloons go. And the Every fact time. that the fact that the cops are like, oh, we found black balloons at, at the... I'm more so of the mindset of, like, not only did Finn just, like, he drops the eggs and he's like, oh, I'm going to help you and, like, then get kidnapped. But even, is it Robin, the Mexican kid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robin, like, homeboy, oh, like, God, it's yeah. an empty parking lot and he's just, he just walks, like, right <laughs> towards him towards in slow motion. Yeah. And the magician dude, like, opens up his cape and lets the, like, balloons, balloons go, go. yeah. Like, 50 yards away from him. It's not even like it's a close thing. And then Robin's just like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah, that's, he that's was, That's because Daniel yeah. LaRusso can kick anybody's ass. Da Daniel LaRusso? Daniel LaRusso, the karate kid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah, he did kick some ass, though, in that earlier scene. He whooped that big bully's ass. That was possibly my favorite scene. In the I movie. loved yeah. that kid too. I mean, we could jump all over around in the plot or go on to the acting section because so, I was so ready yeah, to chat just about to wrap all this those up kids. and fully spoil the plot and yeah. like see if discussing the rest of what happens brings up anything that either of you want to talk about. Finn is in this dungeon with just or like called a basement. Basement, I guess. Uh, with they don't nothing have but a mattress. A whole lot of basements in Los Angeles, which is why <laughs> Travis thought it was a dungeon. <laughs> dungeon. Yes. <laughs> he proceeds to get these calls. Trying I'm trying to stay on I'm trying to stay on focused topic? here. Sorry, yeah. y'all. I'm trying to run a podcast here. Okay. Me, 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 he me, gets me, these me, calls. Me, me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he gets this <laughs> You were the one who made shark noises earlier. To start this podcast, I did off. not make a sharp noise. You totally I made a into fart microphone. noise. That was not a sharp. He turned noise. around, put his pants up to the microphone, <laughs> and let a little one go. I actually saw a little bit come out. <laughs> a little bit sharp come out. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, go ahead. For the like 100 or 200 listeners that we've had for these first four <laughs> weeks, I'm sorry that this will be your last episode. I hope this is a good. Who doesn't one. <laughs> love a good shark joke? That's true. Anyway, as I was saying. Why, dude? Acting. Okay, let's go into acting. <laughs> I'm done with you two. So the kid gets out in the end, and everyone is happy-go-lucky, and... I mean, he gets out in a cool way, though. He he literally, like, snaps the dude's neck that, at the end, which is pretty rad. I, I also liked the little booby he, trap that he, he set follows up for him. directions. Yeah. That's how he gets out. That's the cool way. He follows the exact directions that well, all the dead kids tell him. Or if you listen to me, he listened to his own inner monologue. There we go. His intuition. Yep. Only the strong survive is the message that I got from But it's film. not his inner monologue because the grabber asks, like, is the phone ringing? And, like, he pauses because he hears the phone ringing. Right. That's what, that's what I meant of, like... Yeah, maybe from upstairs, though. Really, Brian? I'm just the saying. movie's called The Black Phone, and we're going to be talking about the phone that's upstairs. No, are saying. you talking about in the in the opening moment when the grabber is first downstairs with yeah, him? Yeah, and he's like, yeah, no, the phone is ringing upstairs. Brian's correct about that because I boom. had to rewatch that back because I was like, what a weird plot point or thing happening. Then he goes, I better go see who it is, and he yeah. walks upstairs to get the phone that's actually ringing. You, and the do black you actually phone hear the phone ringing? Yes, Very and the black phone late. doesn't ring until yeah. later, and it's a, it's a different phone ring. I will listen I to it again. I went back to because I thought the same thing you did, and I was kind of going, what are they playing with? 
with this damn phone thing here. One point for Brian. So then, wait, wait, wait. So then if he doesn't hear it, when he holds the phone up to his head in the end, it's just silence? It's not all those kids saying like, today's the day, motherfucker. Yeah, probably. I think. No, I, I think it is. Okay, I, so no. it's not his inner monologue. No, see, well, well so I'm just, I'll, I guess I'll disagree with Kai then. I didn't get that from the movie, but one I do time, like. People, one at a time. I do like Brian's concept better than what I think the movie actually did. But you did. actually did. I God. didn't, I didn't watch the movie and think that it was his inner monologue or in, intuition. I thought it was actual ghosts. And that's why I thought it was a revenge story because here are all these ghosts working through this kid to get their revenge back. So that's what I thought it was. However, I really like the idea that it was his inner monologue, but I also have a sort of question about the timing of this movie being made and the fact that we have this kid in a locked room that he can't go outside of and the only way that he is getting help in the situation that he's in because there is a boogeyman outside is through his friends on the telephone and I was like COVID anybody oh no this is a short this the is boogeyman a is outside we are all locked in our cells, and we have to only communicate by technology. So, sorry to burst your bubble, but this was written by Stephen yeah. King's son, Joe no, Hill. I it's know. a short story. Know, it has it nothing to do with COVID. Yes, but there's also, you put certain story. The, the story's been around for a long time, but you this movie was made this year. Right, so like you really sing. But the boogeyman's inside the house with him. It's not outside. Could be your roommate who got the vid last week and is still in their room. Okay, okay. We'll cut this whole point. <laughs> oh, Anyways, moving you on. Bastard. <laughs> I'm this kidding. is really intriguing stuff. I'm I'm saying. I'm kidding. No, not. Moving on to acting. <laughs> Jen Star cut that part. <laughs> moving on to acting. Jen Star. I don't know you, but I will come to your house. Her name is Debbie. Get it right. <laughs> Moving on to acting. Kai, how do you feel about acting? Um, I really enjoyed what? this cast. I did. I really enjoyed this cast. Um, I really thought of, you were going to have some takes on, on acting. Can you just let me fucking speak Dang. and then no. you would can know I speak if I for you? some takes? Are we not in America? Can I speak for you, please? <laughs> okay. My gosh. Um, I really enjoyed... One, we talked about Gwen. I thought she was great. Her name's Madeline McGraw. She's been in a bunch of movies. She's doing her things. And she was, uh, she was, I know she was an American sniper when, in 2014. So, like, I just, I think we're going to see a lot more. The of little girl? Mm -hmm. Oh, who was she in American Sniper? Um, was she the fake doll? I was going to say, was she the fake baby? The fake baby? <laughs> um, no, it, I think she plays his daughter. <laughs> ah. <laughs> she plays who? Later. So she plays the fake baby when the fake baby grows mm. older. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I really liked her. I came in to see this movie in the first place. One, because I love horror scary movies. And two, Ethan Hawke is one of my favorite actors. I loved what he did with his voice here. Mm -hmm. I love what he did um, with his movement. I, um, I just always appreciate him. He can ground any sort of work. Um, I thought all the kids were pretty solid. I have more notes on the actual wardrobe makeup directorial side of things rather than the acting side of things as far as performance goes. But no, I, I thought they were fantastic. Um, I liked the detectives. I liked the the counselor or principal or teacher in the scene when Gwen calls the detectives fart knockers. Yeah, I mean, I thought everybody really showed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the the performances in this. The only... The only character that I kind of was like, hmm, was the coked out brother of... Oh, um, interesting. And I, I actually liked him, Max, but he was the only Max. one that did not feel grounded like the other characters in the world did. However, I also think it's hard to make a coked out character yeah, feel grounded because they're on cocaine. So I also didn't find myself going, oh no, this guy. I, I was entertained by him as well. And then Jeremy Davies, who plays the alcoholic father, I just Thank wrote, you, I just wrote, hmm. That was all I wrote. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was, I, I, I thought you weren't going to mention him and I was going to be like, Kai, you went through that whole soliloquy and you did not mention I'm I'm trying to, to dad. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be less of a critic and more of a person who 
This trip to the dog park has just changed <laughs> you changed as a podcast me. host. No, you know what it is? I'm reading the artist way right now for the second time around. And I'm like, I'm really like, man, it is hard to be an artist and to put ourselves out there and to mm-hmm. do the things that we do. And I don't want to like shit on other people's shit, you know? However, yeah, I didn't, I, it's a lot of sharding. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I don't know. He didn't. I didn't love it, but I couldn't exactly tell you what about. Kai, it was bad. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't grounded. It was overacting. It wasn't any like true emotion. It was very heady. It was like. It was heavy. It was heavy handed. I will say that. Oh there was gosh. a lot the of. The only other thing that I've ever seen him in, I've probably seen him in other things that I just don't remember, but the main thing I've seen him in is Lost. He played Daniel Faraday mm-hmm. on a few seasons of Lost. And I did not, like, as soon as I saw him in this movie, Literally, my first reaction is, oh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think he's a great actor. But also, he's always trying to talk like this. Like he's kind of whispering, but kind of talking. And it just feels so fucking, like, I just that's just his voice. And I think he can't really help that. So, like, I feel bad for making fun of it. But it fucking drives me nuts. Like, just speak up, dude. Like, fucking use your big boy voice and stop whispering. (laughs) And, like, I just didn't <laughs> buy... He did speak up. Your dreams well, are not yeah, real! Yeah, but when he was... Yeah, I mean, I will yeah. say the, the scene where he's, like, whipping her with his belt when she's, like, laying... She is amazing yeah, in that. and, like, the whole scene yeah. was kind of one of those, like, oh, man, like, this is fucking brutal. Like, and I think most of that was because of her acting because she's a her, great little yeah. actor. She smashes his, his alcohol. alcohol yeah. I just loved it. And yes, I don't buy I, any of his reactions to it. The fact that he didn't, it. like... No, I didn't but buy I that buy reaction her either. And that's oh, what, totally, that's, that's what, what keeps sold the scene. Hundred percent. Yeah. Any any scene with him and her, it's because yeah. of her that I think the stakes are so high. It's not because agreed. Of him. Uh, I was thinking at the end when he walks up and like gets down on his knees and apologizes <laughs> to the two kids. I was like, first of all, this is just also bad acting. But I was thinking if I was Finn, I'd be like, listen, bro. If I ever see you beating my sister or if you lay hands on me, I've killed a man, so I will kill you. I just yeah. really wanted him yeah. to say that. Him to say that? Yeah, yeah totally. Because and you, you know, know what, what, Dad? I'm going to pick the most inconvenient instrument possible to kill you with. Instead of the toilet seat cover, I'm going to pick up a phone <laughs> yeah. and kill and you with the phone. And stuff it with dirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The I'm going to take my time cover. and do it. Yep. Yeah. It's more I didn't satisfying even think that about way. that. Really? I'm like, you're breaking the wall with this toilet seat cover. Oh, right. Use that on his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's breaking concrete. The movie is not called Toilet Seat Cover. <laughs> That's true. I was like, "Come on, Robin! Come on, Robin! You're telling him to use the phone when there's a toilet seat cover right there." Well, they're all like twelve. They're not that smart. I was also like, "He's giving you glass bottles. You s- crack that and stab him." Yeah, yeah right. That, like it, there, there was were, so there many. Th- there's so instruments. many things in this film where I was like, "Why? Why are you not doing that?" Like, there's there's clear. I don't think I've ever seen a movie. That had that was someone trapped or someone in a situation that they can't get out of with so many opportunities for like to get out. Yeah, to get out. <laughs> and it was so He said in the beginning, they must have already tried all these things. <laughs> so I can't try them again. So as far as like that metal grate, oh that God. metal grate that you pulled. Brian can't get word one out. The metal grate that you pulled out from... I'll just see myself out. Last thing, sorry. The metal grate that you pulled out from the window. Pick it up with both your hands and smack him over the head with that metal grate. That's all I'm saying. He would see that coming. But he's not going to see that little black phone. <laughs> the other thing is like... Also, he stand used behind the, the door. He used the metal grate to trap him so he could cock his little leg and... <laughs> You know, you understand. Go ahead, Brad. As far as the rest of the acting goes, how I felt about it, the kid who played Finn, I felt like was pretty good for the most part. But there's a scene later in the movie where it feels like he's run out of like all hope and he starts crying, sitting on the floor <laughs> crying. It was pretty unconvincing. I thought it was pretty bad for yeah, crying. Yeah, but he's a kid, yeah. But he's like a kid. I'll give him a little bit of a pass. But like, you know, um, Ethan Hawke, I thought was was very un-Ethan Hawke-like in a good way. I mean, I like Ethan Hawke, but this didn't, like, I, I wouldn't necessarily have known it was Ethan Hawke if I didn't know. I just, it felt very different and out of character for him, and I liked it. We already talked about Jeremy Davies. That dude can 
just stop acting as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that Kai en- entered this episode with like, I am not going to critique anymore. I am going I'm to gonna... state my opinion. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and Brian's just like, stop. Fuck that guy. <laughs> stop. Yeah, well listen, all I did was state my opinion that he should stop acting, okay? It's just my opinion. <laughs> I know he doesn't give a shit what I say because he's acting and making tons of money and I'm... <laughs> I'm sitting here talking to you guys. Love you guys, but I'm sitting here talking to you guys. So I guess you could say you're the one that's winning at life right now, not him. Winning. Yeah. So, yep. Yep. yeah. Otherwise, as we said, Gwen, fantastic. She stole the entire movie, I thought, every scene she was in. Robin, that kid might have been my second favorite character just because he's like this little, tiny, yeah, he small, great. shrimpy looking kid. But everybody is terrified of him because he's like a karate black belt and he will just beat the shit out of you and he will rip your fucking face off. And I loved it. And to me, he mm. was the B story of this movie, right? Because he tells the kid, he tells our main character, Finn, in the beginning, you got to be tough. You're tough. Or, you know, and then he tells him at the end when they're on the conversation on the black phone that like, you're a fighter, Finn. You're a fighter. So you, and you're not a fighter because you yeah. push back. because you keep getting back it's up. because you keep getting back up. And so that was the theme of this movie or like the message of this movie, right? But it's right? not. Is like. Because every time we've seen Finn up to that point, homeboy stays on the ground. They're literally kicking your sister in the face and you're like on the ground. Well, he's also getting kicked in the face at the same time. But then he eventually gets back <laughs> up. Yeah, when the guys leave. Yeah, bro. He still got up. <laughs> and checked his sharded underwear. And... Well, right, but that's mid-movie, right? Then he does something about it finally and strangles the Does he though? Or is he just following directions? That that's was, my biggest thing with it. like this whole thing. I get right, you right, that right. like they're trying to say like it's about time that you stand up for yourself, but he's actually not. There's no agency because he's just listening to everything to that's being told. The directions, to him. except for the the last the strangle thing with the the actual kill actual the way he actually kills the guy. Nobody told him to do that when he strangles him with the phone cord. That's the one moment where Finn's like, and this is how I do it, and he takes his power back. Go kid, go. No? Sure. I think my my actual favorite part of the movie is at the end when, when he goes back to school and everybody's looking at him like, and I love that one of the lines yeah, was like, I yeah, yeah, as yeah. he's walking back in the classroom. And he sits down in the classroom and the girl that he's got a crush on, he sits down next to her. And I, what does she look at him? She says something Hi, like, Finn. Finny. And he oh. goes, you can call me Finn. Yes, but he does that I too rolled my because eyes the so hard. grabber calls him Finny. Yeah, but it was just times. funny though. He was like, you can call me Finn. Finn, so yeah, baby, and his little Finn. smirk, yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I liked that too. It's cute. Sure, Travis hated all of this. Travis doesn't like fun. Travis doesn't like film either. I think he just likes to. I like cinema. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> and that was another episode of Good, Bad, Bad, Good. <laughs> the man who started the podcast by making a <laughs> shart noise like cinema. <laughs> it wasn't a shart noise. It was a fart noise. Everyone that's listening out there, in the comment section of any post, <laughs> tell anywhere, us, tell us if it was a shark noise or a or fart a noise. When we post this episode uh, as like a little, uh, you know, a little clip on Instagram, can we just, in our own comment on it, just fart or shark? <laughs> That's the only. I'm gonna get. Yeah. We'll 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 put it as a story. We'll put it and we'll make it a poll okay. and see if people Great. say if it's a oh. shark. Yeah. Or a shark. <laughs> let's let's do an IG Excellent. poll. Quality content we're pumping out here. Quality yeah, we'll content. we'll do a Twitter poll too for all the people out there that are on Twitter. Great. Anyway, I am not as thrilled for the acting as you two are. I do think the standouts are Gwen. I also really liked Ethan Hawke. I just really think he could be in anything. And I actually think he's underrated as an. I don't think we talk about Ethan Hawke as Agreed. much as we should. Agreed, and I don't. I don't think he's ever won. Nothing. Not even a I don't raffle. Think so Man either. Never won nothing. A movie out there that I think, if you're a big Ethan Hawke fan, you should go see. That I feel like everyone slept on was the Phenom. He plays this. He plays the dad of a high school baseball player, and he's like this vindictive, overly overbearing dad that's just pushing his kid to like become the best baseball player. The film as a whole isn't super great, but if you want to see Ethan Hawke acting his ass off, The Phenom is amazing. Does his butt literally fall off? Yeah, yeah. Dang. He sharts too hard and it falls Hell off. Yeah. And it falls off. This is why you don't shart in public. He's won a lot of awards, actually. But no, he's never like... But no Oscars. Oscars, Oscars or, is, or, yeah. is what you yeah, were talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. I think a lot of the 
acting choices for the kids might also be script dictated. Case in point, Robin, who I also love and like have to love him because he's a little Mexican kid and I see myself in him from when he was, when I was little. But the bathroom scene was just really cringe to me. Did you used to have that long, luxurious hair? <laughs> if so, we need photos. <laughs> I did not. The longest hair I had was in elementary school and it, it wasn't that long. I wish. My hair just gets really like wavy and like funky that I could like Bulky. pick it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't like you can if, have a little it just stay. It's like steel wool. Yeah. Anyway, the the bathroom scene was really cringe for me. And I'm surprised neither of you like said this. But How like so? when he's when Robin's like standing there and then he's like, oh, you can go now. And like them talking their banter about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it just felt so. Oh, it, it felt a little stagey. I wouldn't call it cringe though. It felt so forced yeah. and stagey. I remember and... thinking that the I, I remember thinking that the first time through, and today when I rewatched it, I didn't think that so much. See, the first time I watched it, I think I let it go, and it was possibly because I saw it in the theaters. And seeing it here, like at home, it was just like, oh my gosh, like. Ugh. I wouldn't call it cringe. It felt a little. F- like they're trying to force a connection. Like they're trying to show that like, oh, maybe Finn actually does have a friend and it kind of sets up a little bit for later in the movie, you know, like how he, why he's so bummed that he gets kidnapped. And then when they're, when he's either talking to the ghost or hearing his voice in his head or something, but it it felt a little forced. Is your cat, your camera moving? Thank you. I'm wondering what's happening. Your camera's moving all around. She's laying on the other side of my laptop and she just stretched (laughs) and she moved my my laptop. (laughs) For everyone out there, sorry, Kai, go for it. No, I for a second thought that Brian had one of those old school cameras like on top of his computer that was like moving around. around. Yeah, that follows you around. Is Uh, that old school? I don't so. No, that's actually new school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like my, my new iPad or newish iPad does that. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's acting. Moving on to technical. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just start with the mask? Yes. Loved it or hated it? Verdicts. Loved it. I thought the masks were awesome. And I liked how there were there were multiple parts to it. You could see yeah. just the bottom or just the top or a full mask. I really loved the mask as yeah, well. However, why that mask? I thought the mask, sorry, again, yeah, we don't know. We don't know the why. We we got no whys in this man's life. But I do think the mask was substantially creepier and scarier than the actual movie was. Yeah, I would agree with that. The mask makes me think it's like... I loved Horrifying, like I'm going to have nightmares. Yeah. And this did not... This film as a whole was not any of those things. I also liked how it was different almost every single time. Like sometimes he had yeah. just the bottom piece on. Sometimes he had just the top piece. Sometimes he had the full thing. So Brian, did you like the fact that the mask came in different parts? Yeah. Or... Yes, he said that. Oh, you're being an asshole. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest. I... I didn't. I didn't get that you were being an asshole. I just thought you were being dumb. <laughs> Turns out you're being both. I always wonder (laughs) when something like that happens, was that written into the script? Did the director come in and go, you know, I wonder what if we made da-da-da? Did the costume wardrobe department go, can we split this mask up and he only wears certain pieces? Or did Ethan Hawke come in and go, I have an idea for my character? Yeah, that's a good question. I'd be curious to read the short story and see how much of the grabber's personality and like... Ooh, comes was, out in was that? from the short yeah. story or how much of it was because I could also see Ethan Hawke being the type that would want to collaborate a lot of like what this character's totally intentions have the are and backstory yeah. and all that. Yeah. I thought I had read the short story because I've read some of his some of his books, Joe Hill, but this one didn't seem familiar at all. So I must not have read it, which is that's my story. That's all I have to say about that. So I absolutely <laughs> the scariest shots in the um in the film were for me it was Ethan Hawke sitting in mask shirtless yeah. on the at the chair. That he was, looking was kind of the buff, most though, terrifying shot of the movie. Oh, sexy as fuck, but but even in the mask, I was like, ooh, I'm I'd terrified like of me. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come here, grabber. Exactly. I'll get into your van. Spray that weird stuff in my mouth. <laughs> Are those what balloons? He's spray yeah. <laughs> what is he spraying? It that's like he sprays it in the kid's mouth and then he's like, oh, you, Can you see anything? Your eyes are all fucked up, aren't they? That's not what he says or what he sounds like, but you guys know. Yeah, I don't I don't know. The other scene of him that even though we talked about earlier how ridiculous it was when Robin just walks up to him in an open, empty parking lot, but seeing him kind of blurred out in the background behind Robin with like 
a black and red cape, I think it was, and it looked like he even had like a magician's top hat. Yeah, the top that hat. That was yeah. pretty fucking creepy. Like that actually, I thought, yeah. if you just take that scene out of context and yeah. take out the fact that like, you know, this kid is an idiot just walking up to a stranger, like that one shot was kind of creepy, I thought. And In the back giggle. parking lot uh-huh. of, a, of a shopping center. But that's why you take it out of context. Like I No, said. I know. I'm just, I, I'm sorry. I'm just griping on the fact that it's, it's like, all, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just don't think Robin's that stupid. That's all. I think that's what it comes down to. Just because you can kick ass in a karate match doesn't mean you got brains. Truth. Truth. Thank you. Truth. This is very true. So I loved the lighting in this movie. I love the color palette. They really went with the like funky brown, orangey, yellow tones of the 1970s. Also very fall, which Mm. feels like the time of year that this is set because it's cold, it's dark. It's. I loved all of that. I thought the costume designer did an excellent job as far as like really setting us in the 1970s with what everybody's wearing. I had some issues with the makeup (laughs) on the kids who were dead. I just, it it looked so stagey and theatrical to me that it pulled me out of the more grounding tones of the the way that the the film was lit, the the color palette of the film, the blood looked fake. The kids looked like it looked. Let's like talk Halloween about that as a whole, costumes. though, Kai. Like I know you're talking about just the makeup, but let's talk about the actual usage of seeing the dead kids in the. Yeah, I was going to say cell, but it's not a cell. It's a basement. Basement in the basement with him. Yes, people have basements. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. How do we feel about that? I know you said that it took you out, but was the actual usage of the kids? I don't think it was the usage of the kids. I think it was the makeup in particular, especially with like the last kid who's like the angry badass kid. It looked like a kiss character to me. I was like, like, yeah, right. But like with the (laughs) makeup, he looked like I was just, I was watching Kiss. I didn't even notice it really. Haunt this kid (laughs) in the basement, you know? Like that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, I didn't didn't hate the usage of the kids. I think I just didn't love the. The makeup is what took me out. Yeah. I don't have a suggestion, though, of, like, how it could have been done differently. Better makeup. I think, I mean, this is obviously just my take. I think it should have been one or the other. Not necessarily, like, he should either just be hearing them on the phone and not seeing them. Or he should just be seeing them and not having a phone. But obviously that takes away from the whole point of, like, the black phone. I would have loved. So the, the director, David... Scott Deckerson. Scott Derrickson. Close. Derrickson. Sorry. Derrickson. Scott Derrickson also made uh, Sinister with Ethan Hawke, mm. which I also think could could be a good movie for this podcast. But in Sinister, he also uses that like Super 8 film stock footage that is Gwyneth's uh, dreams. I would have loved to see the murders or like the dead bodies of the kids, maybe post-murder in that super grainy film stock. So, like, he's talking to them through the phone but not seeing them. Gwyneth has actually seen them. See? Boom. I love that concept. Yes. And that actually might have been more frightening to me Mm -hmm. than because because seeing them with the pale makeup on like they've been dead for a while because they're in this, this place that they don't know and they don't remember anything, right? I... Which also goes back to the point, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Brian, that I don't think your concept of what the kids, that the kids are, his intuition is correct. Because I think they're in limbo, right? They talk about literally being in limbo. I don't mm-hmm. remember like my name. Like they're in purgatory or something. I don't, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily so, mean. So to me, that is, that is their waiting to do a thing. Don't contradict me. Great. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. Kai, no, you are a strong, independent woman. You oh, can God, have your own thank opinions. You. Both, both of you. Don't listen to Brian. Whip me. That's are like we what Jeremy just Dewey's? happened. I, you, I'm not making a note. <laughs> <laughs> Our performance wasn't believable either. No, you were just like, Kai, don't you contradict me. And Travis is like, Kai, do this. I would just felt like I was being mansplained in, in so many ways. So my building up of you was mansplaining? No, I don't know. Okay, continue though. Sorry. Great. Uh, you may have the floor. I forgot what I was saying. There was something I was going to say too that I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing great, y'all. We actually started the technical category really well. <laughs> oh, I actually okay. So I, this might go back to back to the story and script and plot. But how the fuck does the grabber afford two homes? It's the seventies, and he's white. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I guess, but there's no way magic pays that well in the seventies in Denver, Colorado. And his brother ain't got no job, and he's living on the couch. How come that brother did not know exactly. about the basement? 
Can we talk about that? Yeah. That's a huge plot Don't hole know about we're... the basement. Yeah. Also, when he comes down and finally finds the kid, and then he's he just stays right there. He doesn't open the door all the way, which technically, as a person that has made films, I'm just like, they're doing that because Ethan Hawke is right behind him and needs to swing this axe. And so he doesn't step forward. And now it's so obvious to me watching it a second time yeah. that like... It just felt so stagey. I, I actually took that as he was scared. Like, he was legitimately scared of what might be down there. That's, yeah, but once that's he I sees it. what's down there and he's talking to the kid yeah, is what I'm talking about. Yeah. He opens... Maybe he's frightened of children. <laughs> maybe he he doesn't want to be an accomplice. <laughs> maybe he's like, maybe this little kid is a narc and he's going to see all my cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except if the cop saw the cocaine and just literally <laughs> yeah. walked out the right. door and told him to clean it up, I think he's okay. Yeah. Because right. he's a white man in the 70s. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Touche. With a porn star mustache. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, world's quietest basement steps or like stairs, apparently, because he like don't, he doesn't hear his brother coming down behind him. Totally. And like, that's a creepy thing we could have added. I mean, he also could have been creeping. He could have been creeping down the Brian, steps. Brian, they're basement steps. They look like they were Actually, like, basement steps sometimes are concrete. Was, yeah. They, yeah, but it was like all soundproof concrete. Okay, though. sure. Yeah. Travis, you don't know about basements. Don't roll your eyes I grew up in a town with basements. Guy, we're right. I've lived in a place with a basement, okay? Have you been in a basement? Yeah. Trav, have you ever even been in a basement? Yes, I have. You ever been in a soundproof basement? <laughs> Nope. No, because I'm not a murderer. What the uh, hell, I'm Brad? Just I'm not. I'm just saying that it could be a recording studio. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank but you. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Shabing. Shabing. Shabang. Boom. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Any other technical stuff? I haven't even looked at my technical notes. Wait, wait, wait. Before nitpicks, I wanted to point out the title sequence of the Ooh, opening. I wrote that so down damn too. Good. It's phenomenal. So good. Yeah. Oh yeah. So me too. Good. I was like. Boom, bam, love this. Shabang, shabang. His Scott Derrickson's films, when he he does Super 8 really well, like he know, like when he's going to use that, it's like super effective. Not to mention the technical aspect of Gwyneth's dreams. The first few dreams that we see of hers, it's like this omniscient third person. But then like the last one, when she finally gets to the house, she's suddenly in it. And then the viewer is the omniscient third person and mm. Gwyneth is in it. So then I'm like... It really breaks that like creepiness mm -hmm. of seeing it from this 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 third person perspective, and I really wish they didn't show. I'm like, is now she's like lucid dreaming and like in she's in the super eight world, right? Right. Whereas before we did, she wasn't. The same thing happens in Sinister. It's this really creepy plot, and then it just like disintegrates. Yeah, and then it just we we learn too much and. Sorry to spoil Sinister if you haven't seen Sinister, but then in the end, it's like these kids and like... Yeah, that, that's my thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just wanted to touch on the fact that I did love the score. I yeah. thought the score was, the score was, great. was great. It knew exactly what it was doing. It yep. knew the moments that it needed to be there and it knew the moments it didn't need to be there. It used it was great. the like the best songs from yeah. the 70s. Yeah. And this is why I think this is a bad, good movie. It's so many elements are there. And if they just tweaked a few things or did a few things differently and recasted the dad, <laughs> it would be a good, good movie. Yeah, that's true. Any final technical points before we get to nitpicking really quick? Nope. Cool. Any nitpicks? Um, nitpicks. The balloons. Yeah. yeah. The balloons. The balloons drove me nuts. I just kept thinking about it the whole movie. And for like three days after I got out of that movie, I was like, but why the balloons? You know, just like that. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay, so at the 55-minute mark. Wow, it's very There specific. is when... This is a nitpick. He's got to get real. When it goes into the living room and says, Dad, can I talk to you about the dreams? And then he's like, yeah, sit right here, oh, honey. Oh, why would you feel safe going to talk to your drunken father in the middle of the night who whips you about your dreams that he already said well, you don't have? Because at the end of the is day, that your she's nitpick? still like Because I eight, thought that too. She's still like an eight-year-old kid that probably still wants to see the best in her dad, though. Dude, she's both Gwyneth in middle school. Gwyneth is literally school. the smartest I mean, yeah, person in this entire child. film. Exactly. There's no one smarter than Gwyneth in this film. She calls her older brother kid because she knows <laughs> she's smarter than that motherfucker and everybody yeah. else. And the fight scene with her is just so badass. Like, she murdered a kid. Yo, that kid literally had blood dripping down his face. Gushing. That, that kid sat down, and he he didn't say it, but I heard him whisper it. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to die right now. And that's why he's sitting there, and his whole life is flashing before yeah, his eyes. Yeah, very, very quick Because he's in amazement that his life is ending yeah. right now. Anyways, at the 55 mark, she goes to talk to him in the living room. 
And she says, I forgot what she says. I, I, I didn't write it down. I thought I did. I thought I did. Anyways, they're doing a shot reverse shot. And then they ha- also have a master wide shot, right? So they're going back and forth between the shot reverse shot. And she delivers the line and she's turned towards him. And then immediately at the 55 minute mark, almost exactly, it cuts to the wide and she's facing forward. And that whole scene is shot between or is edited between her facing him and then her facing the wide, like facing forward in the wide. And none of it makes sense continuity wise. And I just thought, it had me thinking, like, is this scene, was this scene like a pickup or like, is it, I'm assuming they didn't have enough time. What was happening in the scene though? It was a, like what, it because you said the 55 minute mark, but like, what is the scene? It's her is it asking part of her... him about the the dreams oh, and like, oh, what if oh, they're right. real? Oh, sorry. It's the, it's the yeah. scene where she's, oh, right. So this where is she says not like, are they dream. real? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know what happened in that scene, but it drove me crazy i didn't notice it i often pick up on go back and watch that and Hmm. you'll see she's facing forward and then she's facing him and then she's facing forward like literally line by line they're cutting she'll she'll like say a line and then they'll cut to the wide and then she's like facing forward and i'm like my biggest nitpick actually about this film i wasn't scared i wasn't scared once i wasn't i didn't it didn't sit with me where i was eerie scared where i'm just like oh my god this like this is psychologically in my guts now and I'm gonna think about it for the next couple days Mm -hmm. I think I jumped a little bit maybe once with one of the ghost shots that was it well because it was a jump scare it was like right of course yeah when I saw this in Austin I saw it in Dolby Cinema and I will say the sound mix this is kind of going back to technical but I want to give it its flowers for this but the sound mix really utilized Dolby Cinema really well because I was sitting there and you could hear the sound being placed like behind you, mm. like oh, cool. cool! I love that. I don't know if everyone knows what Dolby Cinema is, but Dolby Cinema, you're able to, um, so like with with five point one surround sound or seven point one surround sound, you're able to place these sounds within those five or seven chan- like different spots. With Dolby Cinema, they essentially take it and it's like a three sixty sphere, and you could place the sound wherever you want it to be. And the film really did that well in theaters. So if you if they're showing this for some reason in a theater near you still. They are. I just thought it. like a week ago. No. Oh, okay. Well, see it in Dolby Cinema if, if you can. Oh, they wouldn't be though in October when we release this. Sorry. Oh, yeah. wow, 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 wow. So Brian, I mean, Travis, I mean, who is who are you? What's your face? <laughs> uh, you you <laughs> thought this. What's my face? <laughs> you thought this was a bad, good movie. Are yeah. you stuck to that? Yep. Brian? Brian. Sticking to good, bad, baby. I actually maybe it was convinced what? Uh, Travis. Well, well, the way that you described why you thought this was a, a bad good movie earlier a moment ago I was like yeah you know what actually yeah yes. um, I I think I said that it was a good bad movie originally because I because the second time through watching it I was entertained which is always the first part for me so I've, I've I did a little flip flop yes I think that might be the first time that you flip flop I don't know I'm not keeping track anymore But I think that might be the first time that you flip up. Possibly. Awesome. Well, that just about wraps up our episode on The Black Phone. This was week one of our October Horror Fest. Next week, we will be watching... And check your pants to make sure you didn't shart during this episode. (laughs) I did not stop sharting during this entire hour. (laughs) If you did not shart during this podcast... If you did not shart during this podcast, we did not do our job and we are sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Be sure to uh, talk with us on social about what you thought about the black phone, Um, whether you thought it was a good, good movie or a bad, bad movie, or maybe actually, no, sorry. Let's be real. Please tell us if you thought it was a fart or a shirt. That's the main <laughs> thing we're trying to get out of this episode. <laughs> but please uh, be sure to follow us on all social media at goodbad underscore bad good. You can follow me on all social media at Travis underscore Orozco. You could follow Kai at Kai Lee my on the grams. And Brian at. Hey, that's my saying. But I know, I'm taking it. It's bossip on Instagram. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Until next time when we watch Rob Zombie's Halloween next week in continued suspense and horror all October long. Thanks for listening. Bye. Good Bad Bad Good is an Ex Nihilo production. Original theme music and sound engineering done by Jen Star Hacker. Find her at hackersoundmusic.com. Opinions expressed are solely that of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views of any entity they represent.